Hey you guys, I'm Olivia Holt and you're watching my episode of Lip Roll with Valerie Morehouse. We'll launch in, so I'll do I'll do our proper intro. So uh, welcome to Lip Roll, guys. I'm your host, Valerie Morehouse, and uh, today we are talking with the beautiful young Miss Olivia Holt. So thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. And being here today. Um, so I already got the caught up of how you are. I know you're traveling and you're exhausted, and that's how the life is for most <laughs> artists. But um, I want to launch into some of the things about your early career, and then we'll kind of, as you said, a journey. It's been a journey. I want to kind of go across that journey and find out how you landed here. You know what? How you started as, as an actor. Your, um, you know, from beginning, middle to end, and how you, how you're doing in music now. So you were um, part of Marvel's Cloak and Dagger, right, in mm -hmm. Disney, and also in Kicking It. Yeah. So um, I was telling somebody early that, that, that before you landed in my studio, that's how I knew you from, because my kids watched that show so and sweet. they loved it. And we knew you as a kid. Um, so it was, it was interesting to hear after that you were also a singer and, and we will get to that, but how did that all start for you? Oh God, um, so randomly. Like I, it, it's such an interesting thing. I grew, so I grew up right outside of Memphis in, um, in a town in Mississippi, mm -hmm. sort of like smack on the borderline of Tennessee and Mississippi um, called South Haven. And I just fell in love with singing and acting. I think my family is very mu much in the entertainment like world, just whether it was my sister who loves to write and um, my dad who loves to sing and, uh, and they all play different instruments. So I think I just grew up in a family full of entertainment. Wow. And so it, it was in my bones. Yeah. And, um, and then professionally it happened really randomly. I did theater in my hometown for a bit. And then when I was 10, my voice coach in my hometown actually mm -hmm. introduced me to this, <laughs> um, this convention out in LA uh, where agencies find new talent. And my parents were like, this seems really sketchy. I don't know if this is something that we're gonna be into. I remember those conventions. I have a funny story I'm gonna tell you after, but. Oh, please, <laughs> yes. I love exchanging these stories. I have stories. a hilarious story. Um, They've been going on forever, by forever. the way. Forever. Oh, yeah, and like, we were so unfamiliar with it. So my family was like, you know what? Let's make a, let's make a family vacay out of it. Mm -hmm. We'll go to LA, we'll do the convention, whatever it is. And you then, get like a number, your number like 652 or something exactly, totally random. Yeah, yeah. And you're hoping that somebody will discover somebody, you. Somebody, right? <laughs> and, um, and then we ended up making it like a touristy family vacation situation. Right. And, um, and it ended up being really fun and really cool. And the experience was, I think for me, really great, especially that young, because it got me in, in front of like an audience of people and, and important people too, because there were some great agencies there. Um, and then I ended up getting a bunch of callbacks and ended up going to all these different agencies. And the convention was for, um, it was for acting, singing, dancing, and modeling. Yes. And um, I think I just did the acting and singing portion okay. because we all know I can't dance nor model. Yeah. Um, so. I was in the same boat, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but it was really cool. And, and, and I ended up signing with um, a really great agency and I did a back and forth thing from my hometown to LA for like two years. Do you remember what number you were? I wish I, I honestly probably, no, I don't know why no. My brain gets stuck on these really <laughs> stupid details, but anyway. No, I wish yeah. I did. I'm sure I still have my numbers somewhere yeah. in a box somewhere because we like I to keep that looking kind at of it. Stuff. I was, I was a grown up at the time when I did it, but I was probably, I mean, grown up. I was maybe 19 or 20 yeah. and my mom was with me and I remember looking at my number going, oh my God, mom, this is going to take four hours. <laughs> I don't want to sit here this long to be sitting around all day. That's amazing. That's so good. She's like, good. welcome to the business. <laughs> well, that's, that was my first experience. Of, right. of the business yeah. and it was it was sort of like a cattle call it was so bizarre I'd never seen anything Total like it but and you ended up getting representation out of it I did no it was great it definitely was um I, I lucked out it was a really good experience was it like for a me John mine was like John Robert Powell yeah no there were a bunch that? of uh, absolutely no there were a bunch of um there were a bunch of kids there for like from that group um but it's good that but, that's something came because to me after i saw it, it was a total racket they just wanted yeah. you to buy photography so they did call you i got that call but they just okay. wanted to sell you you know you can do a portfolio and you can do all this sure. photography and so i did not get <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> i did not it did not work out so well for me <laughs> But that's okay. That's okay. I, I'm in my calling. Look where you are yeah, now. 20, no, this is great. 30 plus years later. <laughs> so funny. Well, and that's also, the, it's like I wasn't so, 
obviously like in that category, like I, I lucked out and, yeah. and I got, you know, a good experience out of it. But since then I've been dealing with so much rejection and yeah. I didn't realize how much rejection I was going to have to be dealing with, yeah. especially at 10 and 11, 12 years old. How and old were you when you first did that? Did you 10. you were 10? I was 10. Okay, yeah. And I had no idea what I was doing or what I was getting myself into, nor did my family. And, and no disrespect to, to, to John Robert Powers. Right. They're amazing. They <laughs> found course, great absolutely. people. Yeah, Sorry, it's like slight disclaimer there, but I'm just, it was just my story. I'm sure everybody else got, maybe I was just mad that. Of course, I, I would be bitter too. Are you kidding? <laughs> bitter party one. <laughs> so you were 10. It was a good was age, 10, right? Yeah. That's great. And it was really cool. I mean, I it was sort of the best of both worlds. I yeah. I got to come to LA during the summer and audition. And mm -hmm. if I booked something, great. But if I didn't, great. I would just go back home, do school. Yep be a part of whatever activity I was doing. And it, and it really was, it was the best of both worlds. And then two years into that, I ended up um, booking a television uh, series on Disney Channel called mm -hmm. Kicking It. And um, that was sort of the 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 kicker. I mean, we, yeah. we were like, okay, now we gotta make the move. Cause that show, tw like 20 something episodes, you shoot nine months out of the year, it was sort of like, we were like, okay, we got to pack were our a bags lot and of episodes. I mean, oh yeah, no, I there watched. Was. I had to watch it through my kids because all they had on when yeah. they were really little That's for so years. Funny. They just loved that show. That's so. so cool. That's really sweet. It was cute. It was a cute show. Thank you. Yeah, and I thought it was like the perfect place too for me to be. And a lot of people, from what I know now, have auditioned from multiple Disney things, whether mm -hmm. it's a show or a movie, or even on the music side of things. But for me, that was my first. Disney audition period oh, and so okay. so you're just catapulted into it it wasn't like you had to go on a tons of auditions not and, at all yeah. no yeah it was a very interesting and different experience from what most people have had so um yeah I really lucked out in that in that in that in that realm and um and I was 12 when I started the show I think I was 15 or 16 when that one ended and then I did another one called I didn't do it with them for about two seasons and I was 18 whenever I finished well, sounds working kind of with perfect, the channel right because no, now, it was so perfect yeah now so you, perfect. you had that experience you didn't have to go out I I don't know they're, they're both difficult but being a musician is just you know especially when you're young it was hard enough when you're older and you're grown right. so it kind of worked out great for you so you had that stability where you could sort of be in one place and film you know and be in school I think if you had been a singer or had tried that career a little earlier that could have been a little bit more tumultuous for you I think so too yeah I think so too and I don't think I again didn't really know what I was getting myself into mm -hmm. and I think I was just excited to have a job and to be working with really cool and awesome people and then I when I sort of started to um I mean, obviously, Disney has a very specific formula that yeah. they, you know, I mean, we've seen it with starting with Hillary to Miley to Demi to Selena. And um, I think I, I think we I did a decom, a Disney Channel original movie where my character sang. And I sort of took advantage of that opportunity to get sure. back into music again. And I mean, since then, it yeah, it's been it's been a whirlwind of like trying to figure out what kind of artist I want to be and and yeah. and how exactly I want to maneuver this. Who were some of your childhood influences? Uh, m mentioning Hillary Duff, Hillary Duff. Right. I think the first album I ever bought was um, Metamorphosis, mm -hmm. and I got it on a CD. And I had a CD player at the time. I know you a lot of people it, don't you think make it that sound I was so alive ancient. Around. I mean, I I'm from like I'm like from 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 not just VHS, but from eight track days. So, so good. the first car I ever got from my mom was this like a hand me down Volvo that I was happy to have, but it That's it had awesome. an eight track in it. And in the That's little side amazing. pocket, I opened it up when she gave me the keys. I'll never forget at 16. And there was like Barry Manilow in the side. You might not even do you know who Barry Manilow is? No. I should probably God. Oh, I know. God. I, I, I'm sorry. And, and, and Johnny Mathis. No, why would you? Listen, they were the greats. Um, they're all very old now, but they were, you know, big Shirley Bassey. And I said, yeah. Mom, you got to get these out of here. And so we ended up then putting a tape player in, and that was super cool. That's yeah, really so cool. When really I hear cool when I hear younger people talk about CDs being ancient, it's just it's really funny. But they are. <laughs> they are well, ancient. no, what I'm saying is like I don't feel like they're ancient because I had them as a kid. Yeah. My brother, who is now 17, did not. Like he yeah, did not. That right? they wow. weren't they weren't really happening like, or what's around. A CD? Yeah. <laughs> but um, I still have I still have my Hilary Duff Metamorphosis CD. 
Um, Did you know that you wanted to be one more than the other when you were young or maybe on the show? Was there a pull? Well, before I started working on um, in television, it was music. I wanted to do music, but I was auditioning a lot for um, commercials, feature films, indie films. Very rarely did I, I did a little bit of pilot season, but I had never booked a television series until uh, the Disney one that I did. So yeah, I, I think it was music that I wanted to do, but, and then I, and then once I started to realize like how much I loved acting, they just equally sort of like fell on the same pedestal. I didn't feel like I wanted or needed to do one more than the other. Right. And it, and it must be, it must be simpler to have had at least you know, a family that was introduced into it, you know, it, it's harder when like I, I, nobody in my family sang or acted. I had, you know, an aerospace engineers on one side and, you know, uh, law and, you know, administrative on the other. It's so wild. It was just very business. And so my parents didn't really know what to do with it. They're, I don't know what to do with this, this girl that popped out singing, you know, so it was harder, <laughs> but you had mentioned that your, your family's into music and, and arts. Did your, did either of your parents or your dad, did he do it as a profession? or was it more uh, of a hobby? Kind of, sort of. Um, my dad was in a 80s hair band. Oh, great. <laughs> Not kidding. I it's might know It's kind it. of embarrassing. No, you probably wouldn't. Um, it's might. called Romeo Wild. Yes, um, I do. That's obscure, funny. Obscure, yeah. but yes. It was for literally the hottest second ever, but... If, if I mean, I do anything, remember the name. And if this is anything about like me, I've been to three Van Halen concerts. <laughs> like I, that's 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 the kind of music that like I grew up oh listening God. to. Yeah, <laughs> um, but but I think it's because of my dad that I love music so much. Like hair he band. just I love that. that's yeah. hilarious. He's so funny now. Like he had such like a he had a mullet back then, and now he has frosted tips. So your dad like, would know all those those metal bands that I grew up with, like Great White and Dawkins and absolutely. Cinderella and absolutely. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah. No, you guys would bond over that. He for sure definitely like instilled some sort of like music life into me because. I think without him, like I wouldn't have, especially like such a wide variety of taste of music that I like Mm -hmm. versus like just growing up and listening to one genre and falling in love with that specific genre and not really like listening to anything else. Right. He made me like love all sorts of genres of music and also finding a way to sort of incorporate and intertwine some of those genres together to, to make it your own or unique and you can never really find your own style until you try different things. Absolutely. Too, and you just don't know. Absolutely. And that's one of the things my a lot of my younger artists struggle with is like, okay, I'm leaving this job now or I'm I'm changing gears. It's sort of like what Taylor Swift did and completely changed, you know, her persona. Miley did it. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. to be successful at that isn't so easy. It's it's just like it's a perfect storm of things. And so yeah. I would imagine finding yourself and what you want to sing and who you want to be is is really tough. Um, because I met you as a singer, and I I can't remember how we met now. Do you remember how we met? I can't remember. I, everything just terrible? sort of like like yeah yeah. The table's moving. I'm moving the table now. Right. <laughs> the guys, my my, You're my team, than you look. my team knows that I'm constantly like fidgeting <laughs> in my stool. I'm like this is so no, it's not. I'm very comfortable. Um, but yeah, I can't remember how we met. Somebody must have referred you to. Oh no, I do know how we met. So I work with Hollywood Records, and I do everything for Disney. So yes. somebody maybe it was John. Zonars or Ken I think Buns so. or somebody sent you yeah. over to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. And ages ago too, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, it's been years. Yeah. A few years. How old are you now? 21. 21. Yeah. So it's been a minute. Yeah. So you came in for singing. So I really just met you as a singer um, and, you know, discovered you had this really cool talent. I'm like, I don't know where this girl's going to go for music because you could hear different influence, influences there. Yeah. Do you think that you found your sound I think so. I think it's been a really long process. Like you said, like it takes a minute to sort of play around and figure out exactly what you feel like fits best within not just your voice, but also like you as an individual, like what makes you different and makes you stand out. And like also what makes you feel like you're doing enough of finding a zone of comfortability, but also right. stepping out of your box a little bit. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky, uh, fine line between like figuring out exactly who you want to be as a musician and artist. And I'm so lucky that I've gotten to work with so many amazing people like you who have sort of helped me 
become my own. Well, it's and not just about it's not just about the the singing and the lyrics and the songs, right? Yeah. It's about who you are as a person. And I Absolutely. just had this conversation with one of my guys in Nashville, who's a young, hot, amazing artist, but he's still sort of finding himself, and he's sort of in that rock country genre, if you will. And uh, it's I don't know what he has like three names to it. But I said to him. He, he has the single out and we're talking about doing things, doing his show live now. And I said, I just don't, I don't believe you. Like you're being too polite in the song. You're talking about something really deep and really kind of hot between you and this girl. And I, you know, I just don't believe it. You yeah. know, you're just, you're singing and you're aware of yourself and you need to put the lesson behind you and then get on stage and then just be, be the story. And absolutely. Like, you're absolutely right. And I said, it's showing up on the recording and now he's like, Oh, I got to go back and re-record that. <laughs> You know, so I said, I'm I've sorry, been but there, yeah. though, and I know that feeling and it still sometimes happens. And I think it's just like sort of finding your own, finding your voice, finding a way to like own all of that. And mm. sometimes it's hard and sometimes you get tracks or songs or lyrics or sent to you and you, like, what is you this? yeah. And, and you're <laughs> like, I don't know, but I'm going to put my vocal on it to see like if it works. And sometimes it works and it's amazing and yeah. it's magical and electrifying all at once. And then sometimes it just isn't there. Yeah. Cause as an actor, you're always playing someone else or you're selling something right. else. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, cause you did, you did commercials for a while, right? Yeah. For a long time. Um, like Hasbro. Yeah. Um, the Bratz dolls. Was that the one? <laughs> oh Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, that was one of my first ones. I also did Kids Bop. I did Kids Bop 14. I was in, back in the OG days. I think they're on like Kids Bop 79 now or something. But. All right, but so you've been doing, I mean, you've been doing this for a while and you're putting yourself into that place where, you know, being a Disney kid is, I wouldn't call it a box, but like you no. said, it's a certain cog, it's a right. genre, but they really do cultivate this long career that you can have. I mean, I would t tell you this, a lot of labels that I, I work with don't do that and they don't cultivate the artist as a whole so you've got Disney acting you've got the TV and then you've got the music as well and I think they found a really nice way to bring all your talents together and support you in that way you know um yeah and then just being a part of a huge family like Disney do you feel that that has helped you in your career having that support absolutely yeah I think I learned a lot about camaraderie and loyalty and and really what it's like to I've never I like I grew up I grew up as, as a competitive gymnast like so for me that was that was a that was teamwork mm -hmm. but also you're sort of defending for yourself like it's a competitiveness against like your your own yourself. team yeah and yourself and it, it's fascinating it like you don't as a kid you're not really registering exactly like what that is mm -hmm. and then as you get older you're like oh where'd you do gymnastics uh um, so probably back in Tennessee yeah back yeah I, I was it was nothing very serious even though in my head I was going to the Olympics um, I, I was as well <laughs> And yeah, I think we talked about this. I was a gymnast. Yeah. I was a very serious gymnast yeah. in England in the 70s. Um, <laughs> and I, yeah, I, everybody at this little place in Surrey, they were sort of being groomed to go to the Olympics. And I just, I didn't have it. I mean, I, I can't, I knew then. Oh, so you were really, you were like, I see, I just made it up in my head that I was going to go, but you were like probably really going to go. No, I think I knew that I wasn't good enough. I think I knew that I didn't have, like, I was a really good athlete. Okay. I've been an athlete my whole life. Um, but I, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I, I fell into singing when I was nine. I discovered I had a voice when I was nine. Yeah. And I think <clears throat> I, w I loved sports, but I was leaving the gymnastics. And we were also moving from, you know, England back to California, back to, to America. And so there was this, just this big divide, but I kind of think that I knew that I was not going to do that. There was something yeah. inside of me going, I, I have something else to it's offer. Crazy how that happens. Isn't it? Even yeah. at that young age. That's how I felt. And I loved gymnastics, but I was like, this isn't, this isn't what I'm going to do. This I, isn't it's, what. It's tough though. I mean, yeah. there's, I, I have no fear in many areas of my life, but I remember just being afraid of the beam. Yeah. And I was afraid of, of uh, funny enough, the bars, like hitting my hips on the, you yeah. know, when you do the, the no. bars and only yeah. another gymnast would understand that. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. it, it was terrifying to me. And I just thought I'll do an athlete. I'll run track. I'll do other things, but this is not going to be for me. Yeah. So I think I kind of knew at a young age, but you have that ath athleticism and you have that stick to because you did that. Right. As a kid. I think so yeah. too. I also like, I like firmly and fiercely <laughs> believe in 
the day that I'm not having fun anymore, yeah. no matter what it is that I'm doing or you're doing, or, or if it's if it's gymnastics, if it's music, if it's acting, the day that like I get that there's going to be challenging days, well, good and days, bad days, right? Yeah. But the day that I wake up and I'm like, this is. I'm not having fun. Like, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Because we only got one life. Like, it sounds so cliche and cheesy, but like, I want to live it to like the best of my ability and I want to live it doing what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm in a state of like limbo and like I'm not, I'm not going anywhere, but I want to keep moving forward no matter what that is and having fun while doing it. And fun, like, it seems like such a simple word that people just like throw around, but like I'm using it as lightly as possible because like I truly do want to like enjoy exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel stuck and they don't feel like they have the opportunity to find their passion. They just, you know, it's very route. You know, right. you go to school and then you graduate. Or if you go to college, you go to college and get a job. And, you know, there's this, everything's sort of mapped out. So it's yes. fun to know that you can take another path and have a dream and, and encourage yeah. young people to to also do the same, to not just be, take what has been fed to you, but actually explore inside yourself and, and check into your intuitiveness um, and find out what you really want to do for the rest of your life, right. you know, and like yeah. keep asking those questions. So is there anything that um, you would, or any advice that you would give a younger actress in the spotlight as like an, how to navigate that career, how to navigate, like how did you deal with all those things coming at you as a young, young person? I think if I could go back and I could tell myself anything, if I could do anything differently, I would, I think I would not want to take myself as seriously as I did. Mm. I think I lost a little bit of like my charisma and like this childhood that was sort of forced into being in a professional environment at right. such a young age. And I, I took it very, very seriously, which I think there's a, there's, you know, a fine line between taking things you're seriously not and professionalism. Exactly. You're, yeah. you're, you're learning your lines and right. you're on set and yeah. then you're studying and yeah. But I think I would have just like, I wish I would have like embraced everything a little bit more and enjoyed Mm. the moment a little bit more because those are memories I'm never going to be able to get back because I didn't really look at the life that I was given or the cards that I was dealt and and looked at it with or taken it with gratitude and Mm -hmm. and would have been a little bit more present maybe but I don't think you know I love that I love that you said that but just to you know play off of that presence is something that you learn Absolutely. As you mature yeah. and as you become, you know, older on the planet and as you become more awake. Yeah. And as a child, your brain is still forming. So it's very hard for you to tell your eight year old, nine year old, ten year old self, hey, you yeah. know, Olivia, <laughs> be present. Oh, I wouldn't have listened. Namaste. I'm stubborn. There's yeah. no way I yeah. would have no, listened. No, I mean, we all were. We, we all were like, oh, you know, you have a goal and you almost compartmentalize in your life. But yeah. You, you, you know, you would love to be more present, but you're going to be telling yourself that throughout the decades. Oh, like, oh 1, I wish I was more present percent. when I was 21. Yeah. But it's good that you're aware of it now. Absolutely. Because most people aren't. They just walk around, you know, like robots doing their job. Right. And it's like, stop. Well, and I've seen that so much, especially like within like the, my, my generation and even like the generation behind me. Like, I feel like we're all just like, we're, we're, we're go, 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 go getters, which mm-hmm. is great. And I love that about us. And we have a voice and we're not afraid to use it. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like there's a part of us that doesn't know how to slow down and yeah. just like we're all guilty of that. And yeah. yeah yeah we're all guilty <laughs> of that so so moving moving more current um you're playing the role of tandy bowen mm-hmm. um how did that come about and so for the listeners that don't, that don't know that that's dagger um on the marvel show cloak and dagger yeah. right um how did that all happen for you um i got a call from my team um with with this audition for a show called Cloak and Dagger uh, with Marvel, and I love Marvel. I've been a, I've been ever since I was a kid. I remember going to the movies and being such a fan of just them in general. And um, I they're very hush hush. They're very secretive. Mm. So I didn't get a script. I just got audition sides, and I went and I auditioned, and it went great. I got a call back to do a chemistry read. And uh, chemistry sounds like science, but it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's It's not. not. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Basically read with like a bunch of different actors and and all the other actors read. You know, we all did some sort of mix and match with actors. And um, and then uh, that weekend I got a call saying I got the part. So it was a very quick. Wow. 
It was a very it's quick fast. turnaround. Very. I think that they That's were. That's kind of good that you're not just sitting there going, oh my God, it's been three months. I know. No, I know. You feel That's... like you went in to read and you were so excited. And then you find out that they're reading like 15 other, 20 other girls mm-hmm. and you're waiting. So, you know, quick yeah. is good. Yeah. No, I would much <laughs> rather it be faster than that. Um, but it was great. I, 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 I really love this project and, um, and I love the people that I work with. I really wasn't, like I said, sure what I was stepping into because I didn't get a script or any of that. I got a script. We shoot down in New Orleans. Which is kind of terrifying because no, you don't know about no the content, idea. You right? just sort of like have to like trust and put yourself in like, thank God, like I've seen tons of like Marvel projects. So like I sort of understood, but, but with this specific project for Cloak and Dagger, Mm -hmm. very different tone. A lot of the show is very dark and I don't think a lot of people realize how dark the show Mm -hmm. is until they start watching it. Because it deals with drug use and family drama and death and yeah, lots of heavy topics that we're tackling. Um, And I, that's one of the reasons I love working on this show is because there's a specific point and the point is to entertain obviously, Mm -hmm. but also for us to impact people and for them to watch the show and take away something from it. And, and, and with the second season that we just started airing, it's all focused on human trafficking, which is obviously Ooh, very that's real. Big, that's a big, very big alive. Thing exactly. Now. And it's tricky because you don't <laughs> want it to feel, or we don't want it to be inauthentic. We want mm-hmm. it to be as authentic as possible, but we're also in this realm of fantasy. So how do we maneuver this in the right way? And how do we make sure that we're telling a story as honestly as and, and authentic as authentically as possible right. without throwing in all of like the superhero aspects and making it not real sounds anymore. Very cool. I mean, it's it's very it's very conte- sounds very contemporary. It is. No, it absolutely is. So I feel very lucky. My character is really. I love playing her. She's a lot of different layers and dimensions to her she's not just one note which is something that i i love i feel like a lot of women aren't that way and i think in tv we don't really see women Mm -hmm. that are confident and complicated Mm -hmm. and um driven and ambitious and resilient and all these things that women are we don't see those sides of them and with my character i feel like the writers do such a great job unless you watch game that. Of Thrones. unless you watch game of thrones <laughs> <laughs> then it's my on a whole new dying level right now of... i just like i was like i can't believe you don't you got you gotta get it you gotta watch it it's amazing <laughs> I know I need to catch up it's so good I need to yes, catch up yes it's so good I mean we need more shows like that where you have these big strong I think so female too. characters I think so too and the cool thing is like I I one of the reasons I love social media is because you get that feedback instantly and um so many people reached out to me through social media right when our show finishes airing and they're like dude, I love Tandy. I feel like I want to be like her in this way or I am like her in this way. Do you way. read all those I don't read all comments, of them, but I read that seems most really of them. overwhelming. No, it is. It absolutely is. I'd be like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it totally people. is overwhelming, but I, in some ways it's for, for it's good. I feel like yeah. it's good to like read those things and to be, I mean, it makes me feel like the work that I'm putting in is worth it. Right. All the, I mean, and not just me. Because where else have you guys, really, it's a blessing and a curse. We've talked about it on the show, but where do you get that kind of feedback, really? Right. You yeah. Know? And, and I think sometimes, you know, the negative ones can really throw you off. Yeah. And, and that's, it's a bummer, but I, I feel lucky. Everybody's to, a critic. Everybody. <laughs> no. And like, here's the thing is everybody's going to, we're humans. Like, we're yeah. all going to form our own opinions. Yeah. I think it's just you know, figuring out exactly where those opinions well, are what their agenda is, what their agenda and who is. they yeah. are. You just have to take, you know, and I, I think that would be, and I think you would agree with me that for people your age and even a little younger, that the lesson and the takeaway there is you got to take it all with a grain of salt, people. Absolutely. Because, you know, you don't know who's on the other side of those comments. You don't know what they're going through. Yeah. You know, and often we talk about projection, you know, oftentimes they're projecting something in their lives onto you that has nothing to do with you. It's about right. them. You know, so 99.999% of everything somebody says to you that's negative is something they're carrying around, you know? And so I think if you just keep that rule very simple and just have that force field around you and say, you know, I'm prepared for these negative things to come in, but, but I'm okay because I, I'm enjoying myself. So it goes back to what you said earlier about having fun. Yeah. And just living in that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I love, you know, it sounds like a really cool role and who are some of your co-stars? 
or who is my co-star who plays Tyrone Johnson cloak Mm -hmm. um his name is Aubrey Joseph Mm -hmm. and he's so rad and I'm so happy to be working with him like he just is one his he just has these natural instincts that are just electrifying like fun to work with somebody like that really isn't it? cool yeah. and he actually comes from broadway um he Even played better. yeah he played <laughs> young simba in the lion king for ages i oh, swear wow. to god i've seen him i've seen that show like five times so i i feel like i must have seen him i wish i would have kept my playbills because of this but well it's probably one of this like that full circle moment that you're not absolutely aware that is has happened yeah you know? um and he is so cool so Mm -hmm. great like he just really dives into this role and into this story and he he brings it and i think that there is a lot something to say about that somebody who just is always on their a game what's the atmosphere like working on such a serious show yeah no it's it's weird because i worked in sitcom for six years of my life totally different (laughs) totally different everything's sticky the (laughs) the energy and the tone of like working on a sitcom where like everything is just light and fun and airy and then you go to a set an hour drama where we're talking about some really intense and heavy and real topics like it it is a whole different tone. Um, well, some of the listeners might not know this, but for anybody who's been on a set, I've been on many uh, with my clients for, for various reasons, but I have found that, surprisingly so, that some of the lighter shows and some of the more comedic shows, we probably have singers on there or whatever, are some of the darker <laughs> sets. Oh, because yeah. Because some of the people that are comedians are, can be very dark, absolutely tormented individuals and it's not always it was not always the happiest goat fun you know loving set that you've been on and some of the darker shows were some of the nicest most jovial people i've ever met you know and so Mm -hmm. you just you can you never can tell no you can't yeah i think what's really good about our show is everyone is very respectful of when there's emotional scenes or um emotional pieces to the episode they everybody whether it's cast or crew production everybody is very respectful and gives the actors um space right in order to be in that headspace and to be able to be in that moment um but then there's some lighter scenes where we can have fun and mm-hmm. it is a real i mean you it's home away from home for everybody yeah. you spend more time with these people right. than you do your actual own friends and family so it's nice to go to work and be excited about being in an environment where people are respectful but also they can have fun and enjoy you know each day as it comes so you were talking about traits um earlier and sorry I didn't mean to cut you off I just like I was going I didn't want to lose my train of thought (laughs) because I I something an alarm bell went off in my head where you're talking about as a person or as a woman or whatever that that you're a lot of different people and I think think we all are but is there any traits in your character that are close to your own person yeah um anything that you relate to well yes and no I feel like absolutely not because tandy and i just live very different lives Mm -hmm. um she can be a very cynical human being where is i'm way more optimistic about life and about myself and about the people i surround myself with um what i hope to think that is similar is tandy is a um very driven human being she doesn't stop at no and won't take no for an answer Mm -hmm. And I'd like to think I'm the same way. I'd like to think that, you know, I I can break down all the preconceived barriers about myself and just go. Right. And um, and we also I'd like to think we beat to the rhythm of our own drum. You right. know that we are unique and in some aspects of life and but it's finding those 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 things in in any given role i remember you know um i was an actor for a while i did obviously a lot of music um, music and musical theater and plays and things like that but one of the things that i found very challenging was i was judging characters i was not my teacher would always say to me I was playing a a role of someone that I was judging because she was very weak. Yeah. And she was very, um, didn't know who she was and she let a man treat her a certain way. And she was just very, very timid character. And I was having a really hard time playing this character. And I remember my acting teacher saying, you, you, you're never going to play her until you stop judging her. Yeah. And it just was like, oh my God. You know, it hit me like a, it was like a light bulb went yeah. off. And I thought, I am judging her. And this is why I'm not committed to this role. Because in my head, I'm going, I would never do that. I would never say that. Right. So I couldn't really dive in. I think 
I think we have to relate ourselves to the character in some way in yeah. order to be able to play them right. or empathize with them to yeah, feel for I, them and to be like, okay, this mm-hmm. maybe isn't necessarily how I would cope with the situation, but right. this is why and how this person is coping with this situation. And I, need I to think be able empathy to respect that. what you said about empathy is huge. Yeah. I think I have to have empathy as a person. Right. In life in general. But empathy is an actor. You have to empathize with that character to understand it. I think that's that's big. Um, You know, there seems to be a big impact for you of being part of this big Marvel universe. And and what would that be? How how has been part of that family (laughs) impacted your life? Um, I mean, obviously, because you said it was something that you would always you love the comics and you love all of that. Right. um, as, as As a kid you know, or as a Mm -hmm. younger person, and now you're sort of in it. It's got to be a weird full circle moment. No, it is. Absolutely. It's very surreal. I think, I think because of the way that, and I didn't really read the comics growing up, but I did go and see lots of the movies. And then I started reading um, the Cloak and Dagger comic when I booked the show, just to sort of understand it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I think because of the way that it impacted me as a kid, I'm starting to realize that the the work that I'm doing on the show I'm working on now with Marvel, it's going to impact other people. And it's not going to impact every single person that watches it. Right. And every storyline or, or, or every message that we're trying to get out there isn't going to hit close to home for everybody. Mm-hmm. But if it can hit close to home for five people, ten people, or even one person, yeah. like, then that that means everything to me how and is it filming in new orleans isn't that where it's filmed? yeah 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 it's uh it's it's an island of a city yeah. i can't compare it to anywhere that i've been in the world yeah. like it's com- it's so different it's it has a very um specific energy uh and it's something that i feel like everybody just has to experience for themselves for me it was a it's a dark eerie but slightly romantic city that yeah. just you there's yeah it's a different energy all the traveling i've done i've never been to new orleans oh i've never been gotta go to new orleans it's crazy it is it's really cool um i was i think i was uh yeah i was 19 when i first went and then we shot the first season when i was 20 and um now being 21, it's a very completely different experience. Of course, because like, you can no, go to no, 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 bars no. and it's, you can drink. Well, <laughs> also it's open container there and it's scary. They One thing that I will say about New Orleans is they, the locals, they always find a reason to celebrate. Always. Yeah, yeah. It's not just during Mardi Gras. And by the way, Mardi Gras is not just one day there. It is the whole month of February. Yeah, I would imagine. It's you know, really it's like, cool. It's their thing. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love that. But it's a great city. What I love about why they chose to shoot the show in New Orleans is originally Cloak and Dagger are based in New York, but our showrunner Joe Pekaski wanted to do it in New Orleans. Mm. One, because he felt like there were maybe too many superheroes already in New York. And two, there's something about New Orleans that really speaks to both Tandy and Tyrone. And I think what it is, is New Orleans has gone through so much destruction and, and heartbreak and they've just they keep building themselves from the ground up. Like they don't stop it. No, like yeah. Tandy and Tyrone, they have been through so much destruction, so much heartbreak. There's a lot of synchronicity there and yeah. synergy. Right? Yeah. And I think when you watch our show, New Orleans doesn't really feel like the location. It feels like another character in our show. Oh, yeah. So you feel the energy of New Orleans when you watch it. And we talk a lot about the history and culture of New Orleans in the show too. So it feels like another character. And also, I mean, stylistically, it's just really rad. And you feel you feel like you are there. That yeah. You don't feel like you're in your, you know, L.A. home watching. Yeah. <laughs> or like yeah. in the yeah, suburbs. No, I get what like you, you mean. just Yeah, like you feel like you're there. It's it's special. So how would you how would you compare being on the set for a show like Cloak and Dagger versus perhaps going on tour and living the life as an artist? You know, I know we touched on that earlier when you walked in. Yeah. We were talking about just how singing is, is very different and touring is very different from just being on set and mm-hmm. being an actor. How, how would those two be, you know, be comparative and be different? I think um, I think the reason they're they're very different is because with with 
say like we're doing like pre-production for the show it's you're becoming a completely different person you're yeah. going through wardrobe fittings and you're going to hair and makeup test and you're you're transforming into somebody else mm -hmm. and stepping into the shoes of their life whereas with music it's all you it's like completely except if you have an alter ego like unless yeah beyonce <laughs> is sasha fierce because that's what we need to get on stage right you know, exactly. there are a lot of artists like that but you're coming from a vulnerable and authentic place right. whereas like with the show i feel like i'm pulling from substituted uh experiences and emotions for my character right got it and um and Whereas music, like I'm coming from like actual real places mm -hmm. and whether I write the song or don't write the song, I want to know exactly why I feel so connected to it and why I relate to it so much. Right. And, um, and I think you're, 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 you're just way more in, in, in your, in your headspace versus the character's headspace. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. And, and so shifting over to music, what, what do you listen to now? What's, what's on your, what oh would be God. on your Oh my God. I can literally go on for ages. I listen to everything from like everything from like musical show tunes to. Do you listen uh, to show tunes? Oh, oh yeah. that's so cute. Yes. How cute is that? I actually recently just <laughs> went to, so I have like this weird thing with Santa Fe, right? Okay. Because when I was a kid, I saw Newsies and Jack Kelly wants to go to Santa Fe to, you know, live, a, live the life he feels like he deserves. Right. And then in Rent, what's his name? Not Mark. It's somebody else. Don't he wants to. He's, he's running away somebody to Santa Fe. No, maybe and not. And like everybody <laughs> just wants to go to Santa Fe because they, they just feel like it's the place to be, the place to thrive. And. So I, um, I actually, we had just wrapped second season of Cloak and Dagger and I was driving back to L.A. And um, I went with my mom and we did a we did a girls road trip back to L.A. And I was like, we're stopping in Santa Fe. We stopped in Santa Fe and it was magical. Oh, OK. It was everything. I thought you, I thought you, you, no, you no, waited no, no. for me. I was I like, know. it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have been so upset if it sucked because for so long I and like everybody in my life is like. Just somebody take her to Santa Fe because that's okay. all I talk about. It would have been about. funnier if it sucked, though. Then you could have oh, had yeah, this no. play about how Santa Fe sucks. <laughs> Just kidding, Santa Fe. I'm sure you're. Amazing. It was. I know it was really <laughs> special, and it was. It was like around the end of February, so it wasn't. It was sort of a ghost town. Like nobody was really around. Um, so I sort of got to like experience, I had like my own, it was like I had my own private like VIP tour of Santa Fe because yeah. no one was really there. Whereas yeah. in the summer, every, every, I guess like there's tons <laughs> of vendors and everybody comes out and, but anyway, um, so mu I feel like a lot music of wise. musical, music wise, like I, d yeah, it, it just, it's crazy like how like music can like just make you so obsessed with a place that you've never even been to well, or like a feeling does. that I you want to have. Music is an emotion, Absolutely. right? It, it strikes certain chords in us and it makes us, we remember when we were kids, that song played. I remember being in, for me, if in college or, or, or yeah. whatever it is. So. It either takes you back to a specific moment or a mm -hmm. specific time in your life or you hear a certain lyric that you have felt or want to feel and I feel like so many artists do that to me. What I love right now is there's so many female artists that are doing that for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like obsessed with so many UK artists. It's insane. Who, who uh, are you obsessed with? I love, well, Ellie Golding is one. Um, uh, Jess Glenn is another. Yeah. And Anne Marie, mm -hmm. she's great. Mm -hmm. I feel like like those three women I'm like so obsessed with. They just have such a unique and rad way of writing and their voices are really cool and effortlessly cool too all three of them it's real i like i admire all of them so much and have for years mm -hmm. um but pop so that's your pop those are your pop 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 people so yeah yeah i mean i always listen as far as music as i feel like as long as it's good you know as long yeah, it could be i think so from like too. opera to punk for me as long mm -hmm. as it's good you yeah. know anything from you know going to see for, for me, uh, La Traviata, as it would be to, you know, the Sex Pistols back in the day. Yeah. You know, do you know who the Sex Pistols yes, are? Yes, I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. You're like, at least I have one that she knows. <laughs> I know. It's like I use all these uh, these references. I said to somebody the other day, uh, I had a client walk in and we were going to do a cover. And I said, you know, it would be really great to work on. By the way, people, I don't just go back to the 80s. I work on very contemporary music <laughs> with my singers who are contemporary. You know what? There's something about 80s music. But I like going back to the when we really I get speak. It were really singing and yeah. there was no auto tune and people had we were all analog and people really had to like bring it yeah. so I said a journey song and I, I think this person looked at me and said who's 
journey and I just lost no. it. I'm like, oh my God. No. no. But you know, I think if you're educated in music, you have to be educated in music. I think you so. Know? So yeah. at least from from back then, from, you know, um, Led Zeppelin, even before the Beatles and like all the way up, you know, to, to present time. So that was, that was very funny though. That's amazing. Um, approach to fans. I want to talk a little bit about your fans and uh, sort of how they've all been, you said, nice to have that feedback, all been very positive. So how do you, do you interact with them or do you just interact with your fans on, on social media? Because everybody's different. We've, we, this question has come up on liberal quite a few times. Yeah, no, I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah. I, I've actually met, I've talked with people over social media that I've actually met in person. And oh, I've, wow. I, I, and I know them when I see them in person because of how often that we talk online. It sounds so sketchy when I say online. Like, <laughs> I uh, feel like it, just social media. I remember but, when online dating started happening in the, maybe the early 90s, is mid 90s, maybe yeah. it was mid 90s. And I was completely freaked out. I'm like, what? Yeah, you never know. You never know what you're gonna get yourself mm-hmm. into. But I feel like, I mean, my fans anyway, they, there, there's been some new fans within the last couple years and then fans who have been with me since the beginning, since yeah. kicking it, since the wow. first show I ever worked on. That's and so, dedication. Dedication. It really is. <laughs> and like, it, they, and, well, they sort of like become a part of your tribe, you right. know, and, and they support you. They support everything that I've done, whether yeah. it be music or acting or, you know, they, they are there and they're, it's cool. They hold like, your career up. Absolutely. You know? So yeah. they're very important. You got to give them love. Yeah. So goals, hobbies, I want to talk a little bit about that projects for 2018, because we haven't really gotten to sit down and chat for a while. So I know, um, I know we, uh, this has been a really cool catch up for me, but what, what do you have going on for the year? I mean, obviously besides the show, but anything else happening that you can talk about? Yeah. Um, I feel like once I'm done working on a project, I always like to like recenter myself and reset myself like back, back to square one, like mm-hmm. let me reevaluate the things in my life and mm-hmm. exactly what I need to be doing. And this is such an interesting time in my life because I feel like I'm having a lot of first. Um, I recently like moved out, got my own place, which is a first. Wow. I am like traveling a lot by myself, which is a first, like yeah. with zero obligations, like some for work, but then also just for me and for play and to just explore life and cultures and mm-hmm. to keep curious and um it's being more independent growing being up. a little That's more good. independent which i've always been independent i think it's just on a different this is a different level mm-hmm. um and sort of like what we were talking about earlier like my brain is still developing so i think i'm just still like just trying to soak up as much knowledge as possible um um so it's a lot of that uh, so where can your audience, so you're doing all this traveling, where can your audience find you? Oh, well, okay. That's a little creepy. <laughs> I don't want them finding well, me. Well, not, not in, on location. Like she's in <laughs> Spain and this is her address. This is where she but is. But your socials and oh, where your fans. Oh, my Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah on, I'm on, I'm on all give of out the your socials. address <laughs> on the air. <laughs> Throw if in anybody wants party. to find Livia Holt, <laughs> just check in with Lip Roll. We'll let you know where she's at. <laughs> I was like, Val, where are we taking yeah, no, this? No, no, no. Um, I'm on I'm on all the socials. I'm yeah. on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I mean, those are like the two that I use most. I yeah. feel like everybody uses those two most. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I love chatting and I love talking. So, if, yeah. you know, I mean, I feel like a lot of people are like always nervous to like say hi, mm-hmm. even in person. And like, yeah. I'm so OK with it. Um, You're very approachable. Thank you. I'm thing. really glad that you said that because I feel like sometimes my 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 resting face doesn't say the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> I love that my resting face. I haven't heard that before. Yeah, no, I feel like I I feel like sometimes people are like <laughs> nervous to come up face. to me because I look like I'm in just in the worst well, you're in mood thought. ever. You're in deep thought. Totally. And like, She's such a bitch. Oh my god. No, 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 no. It's just my resting face. <laughs> it is. Bro. No, that's how. And it's so funny too because my mom is the same way. I think I get it from her. And my mm. mom is literally a saint the nicest human on right. earth and if and if you know her then you know that but like if you don't know her you're like oh that, that woman that's looks rule. really yes. scary don't judge people you don't know what's going on internally 1, for that person yeah. oh my god that's so funny 